Six. We are talking this morning, and this is what Ben is looking at as well, um, the decision to freeze the pay of millions of teachers, police officers and civil servants. It's, again, a reminder of the scale of what we're facing in terms of the pandemic and the economy. Yeah, of course, the pandemic has already cost the country billions of pounds, and we will get an update on exactly how much a bit later. So, Ben, there are enormous decisions to be made about money given the amount that has already been spent and w where and when do they start recouping any of that cash and you know judging by what's being reported public sector workers and it's always worth bearing in mind isn't it people we're talking about are teachers they are police officers these are people who who i mean in some ways when you relate it to pandemic are people who have been in the front line maybe not like doctors and nurses but th you know th these are the really hard calls that are going to have to be made yeah, a really emotive subject as well, given what many of those key workers have been through. Uh, the government will be really keen to point out that it has individual pay deals agreed with certain parts of the public sector, particularly nurses, for example. But nonetheless, yes, those reports suggesting that a pay freeze for them could be one of the ways of recouping some of the cash to pay for this pandemic. Because what we're going to get this morning is an update on the public finances. Uh, they'll tell us what state they were in in October, and that'll give as a fuller picture for the year and essentially it's everything that the government is spending and having to borrow to fund that spending versus the money that it gets in in things like tax revenue but remember that business hasn't been operating as normal we've not all been earning as much as normal maybe we've not been out spending as much as normal so therefore the tax that they would normally get in things like income tax corporation tax VAT those receipts have fallen pretty sharply too so let me run you through the numbers as they currently stand because they do give us indication of how much all of this is costing and as you said when we might have to start paying it back. Now, we know the government's job retention scheme. Remember furlough that was announced back in March? Well, it's been spending a lot of money on that to support jobs and the economy through the pandemic. By the end of October, more than 9 million workers had been furloughed. That cost more than £40 billion. Well, by August, the total cost of government measures to tackle coronavirus, well, that had hit uh, more than £200 billion. Remember, as I was saying, the main source of government funds is taxes, either paid by us as workers, consumers or businesses. But those revenues have fallen pretty sharply because we're spending and working less. And so therefore, the government has had to borrow more to cover the cost. And according to the, bar the body that keeps tabs on that spending, the government is likely to borrow, it says, more than £370 billion for the whole of this financial year. Remember, that runs from April of this year to April of next year. That's before the cost of this second national lockdown um, and the support measures it's put in place to pay for that. That sort of level of borrowing has never been seen before in the UK, except during the two world wars. So with that sort of figure, should we really be worried? Take a listen to this a huge one-off um, rise in uh, in government borrowing as a percentage of GDP. Um, so, um, the, you know, there has been a huge deterioration in the public finances. Um, but I think that now is not the time um, to be talking about tackling the cost of the crisis. Um, now is the time to be continuing to support the economic recovery. Low interest rates allow us to do that. Um, and then, um, you know, think about tackling the cost of the crisis further ahead in the future for the Chancellor. And as you were saying, Charlie, next week we'll hear from Rishi Sunak, who will outline his spending and borrowing plans for the year ahead. Uh, so that's for 2021 to 22. It'll also lay out the spending plans for the devolved governments across the country as well. Now, we know already uh, the announcement this week that there'll be some extra money for defence spending, for example. But where that money is allocated, how much is allocated to different departments is still up in the air. That's what we'll get news on. And of course, uh, we'll hear from the Chancellor about how he intends to pay for any of this, given, as we've seen there, the soaring cost to pay for the pandemic, both in support uh, measures, see so things like furlough, etc., but also just making sure that they have enough money to balance the books, given that tax revenues have fallen pretty sharply. 23 minutes past seven is the time. Good morning to you. Now, in the past few minutes, it's been confirmed that the government borrowed more than £20 billion last month. That's a record October figure, the money used to help pay for the cost of the pandemic. Uh, let's turn to Ben.
Sometimes, Ben, when these, uh, these enormous sums are banded around, you hear about 20, million, 20 billion more in borrowing, you have to try and put that in some kind of context. Just help us out with that. Yeah, I'm going to throw some more figures at you, so I should apologise in advance, but they are important because they tell us the state of the nation's finances, uh, particularly as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. The government's having to borrow a lot more to pay for all of the support that it's been trying to offer to various different sectors and to workers. So that headline figure you were talking about, £22.3 billion, pounds, that's how much was borrowed in October. Put that into context for you, it's nearly £11 billion more than the same month last year. So it shows just how expensive October was. It's actually the highest borrowing figure for October since records began in 1993. So, uh, yeah, pretty uh, astronomical when it comes to the number uh, and the amount of money that the government is needing to borrow. Why are they having to borrow? Well, partly because of all the stuff they're spending on things like support schemes and propping up certain sectors but also because it's income. It gets its income from tax, and we're simply not buying as much, so there's less VAT. Businesses aren't operating as much, so there's less corporation tax. And we, as individuals, are working less, so there's probably less uh, income tax as well. So corporation tax, income tax, VAT, all down, so it means they're making a lot less. So where does this leave us as a country as far as our finances are concerned? Well, the first seven months of the year, that's from the start of the financial year in April to where we are now, it's borrowed £214.9 billion. It's £169 billion more than the same time last year. And it leaves our debt, that's the amount of money as a country that we owe, at more than £2 trillion, just shy of £2.1 trillion, the highest level since the 1960s. Ben, thank you very ben. much. We'll uh, let you have a, a bit more detailed look through some of those numbers and we'll speak a bit later. Ben, uh, record borrowing figures for October, £22.3 billion. Pounds. That's actually nearly £11 billion pounds more than the same month last year. That means that so far this financial year, so remember that's from uh, April up until October so far, it's borrowed £214.9 billion. Pounds. And remember that is nearly £170 billion pounds more than for the same period last year. So those numbers are mind-boggling. It's really hard to get your head around them. But it also tells us that the government isn't making as much. So whilst it's spending loads on supporting the economy, it's not getting as much money through the door as it normally would because it makes its money from tax revenue. So for all of us, that's our income tax on our earnings. But if we're making less, we're not paying as much tax. Businesses pay corporation tax. They're not operating at full hilt, so they're paying less corporation tax. And we as Consumers are buying less in the shop, so we're paying less of VAT. So what we're in a situation is that they are paying out much more, they're making much less, and therefore having to borrow. That's racking up debt on the collective credit card. And as a country, our debt now just shy of £2.1 trillion. It's hard to get your head around. Very difficult.